forward. All right, when we're on 11-2 and we're evaluating radical expressions, we're going to evaluate this one for x equals 4. Yeah. And as Chase just said, when you're saying evaluate, you know you need to plug it in. And what that means is just replace the x with the number. Let's do it. Go ahead with black and then we'll put that number 4 in green. Here you go. Just do it in green. There you go. Put it in. We put it in a bracket. Remember, we create a pocket, and then we put it in the pocket. The 4 in the pocket, minus 12. And then you just go from there. 3 times 4 is 12. You get the square root of 12 minus 12, which is the square root of 0. Square root of 0 equals what, Mike? Good. So that's equal to 0. That's one good thing to know, that the square root of 0 equals 0. Okay, this one is number 4. It's the square root of 3y plus 12 for y equals negative 5. We simply plug in negative 5 for y, and we get negative 15 plus 12. That gives us the square root of negative 3. Well, now what do we do? What's the square root of a negative number? Uh, no, you can't do it. You can't have the square root of a negative number. By definition, this has to be positive. You can't take a square root of a negative number. So write no solution. No solution. Or you can also put, it's not a real number. Not put, not a real number. Now, why do we say it's not a real number? Because now we're talking about numbers. Because actually there are, if you extend the number line to include imaginary numbers, then this will have a solution. But for now, for what we're doing in this course, we're not dealing with imaginary numbers. This is not a, no solution, or it's not on the number line. It's not a real number. What's okay, for all intents and purposes. Well, we're not really going to go into that, but basically, imaginary numbers. What they did is take the number line, and what they asked themselves at a certain point is, well, okay, we don't get solutions on the on the real number line. That's not enough for us. We need to create a system of numbers that will allow us to deal, or complex numbers that will allow us to solve problems when they are like this. And so they created a system of numbers, literally, that would allow you to solve this and allow you to find its roots and do all these things. And that's what imaginary numbers are. Again, we're not going to get into this course, but just so you know, what's really important to take from this is the fact that numbers, you, you, you basically take numbers as they are. As a kid, you think, oh, all there is is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. And then later you get the concept of zero. Uh, and then later you learn about integers. And you think that's all there is. Well, don't you understand that numbers can be created? Number lines can be created? There's alternate universes here. And each number line, the real numbers are just one universe of numbers. All right? So that's kind of the idea. Basically that your mind can create and go beyond the sphere that you know. Never accept what you know and see and what you've already learned as being the only thing. You need to challenge yourself continually to ask questions. What's beyond? What's beyond this system? Can I create a new system? What's out there that's different? It's a metaphor for life. It's not just mathematics. That's why math is important. It challenges you to think and to think beyond the number line. Think beyond, out of the box, and challenge yourself. Okay. Let's talk about this. This is asking you what values of x will make the expression a real number. Well, a real number includes not only rational numbers, but it also includes irrational numbers. Remember that. So you can actually, it's a little broader than what we talked about before. Because you can actually have x equal to 2, you'll get the square root of 10. Go ahead. And even though the square root of 10 is probably irrational, it's still a real number. So uh, you get square root of 10. Irrational, yes, but it's still a real number. Can you just close it, David? Uh, irrational number, this is, this is a real number, OK? It's irrational, but it's still real, OK? All right. Good. Let's take another one. What about one? Are there, well, how about this? Are there any numbers that will make this not real? Will this make this any negative? Any negative? How about negative one? Absolutely. Negative two? Absolutely. Won't work. If, you, if x is equal to anything negative, you're done. So our answer to this question is what? What values of x will make this expression a real number? Any positive numbers. That's right. The answer to this is x greater than or equal to zero. That's your answer. X greater than or equal to zero is your answer. So put that in a box. Those, any number you pick that's greater than or equal to zero will make this expression a real number. Maybe not a rational number, but it will make it real because irrational numbers are included in that. No. Hand one, uh, he needs one. All right, so this question is number 24. Number 24 is the square root of negative 3b all squared. So the negative 3b is in brackets, so that means anything inside of it gets squared. So what values of x will make this expression a real number? 
As Mike just said, well, let's try examples. This is trial and error. If you try b equals 0, does it work? 0 times this is 0, and the square root is 0 is 0, and it is a real number, so that works. 0 works, put 0 works. Okay? Turn around, Chris. Chris, did you get a number that you could put in here that we can make, you know, to see that it will work as a, a real number? Can you pick one now? Pick any number. I did. Two, five. Five. Okay, let's take nine. Five works because, Ashley, when we put five in, what do we get? You get negative 15, right? So negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. And negative 15 squared equals what? Does anybody know? Isn't anything that works in squared? You got it, Amanda. Anything's going to work because this squares it. And when that squares it, it's going to make it a positive number. And if it's a positive number and the square root sign, you're going to get a real number out of it. You're going to, it might be irrational, but you're always going to get a real number. And that's, does anybody know what negative 15 squared is? It's 225. So it's the square root of 225, which is equal to 15. The square root of 225 equals 15. And again, we get a real number, right? Yeah. So what is our answer for this? What's our actual answer? What do we finally put down to answer what values of x will make this expression? We put all real numbers. Put all real numbers. You can just do the r. Exactly. You can write all real numbers. Write all real numbers. Or if you're pretty, pretty quick, you can do this symbol, which is a r with a double kind of edge to it. Puts all reals like that. See. Like this? Have you done it? No, okay, here. Like that. This is a symbol for all real numbers, and that's all you need to put to indicate that that's the answer. When it, so, when it says solve t squared equals 49, how do you solve for t? Remember, you've got to isolate it and get it down to t, but how do you get t squared to be t? You could use your brain. Square root. You square root it. Good job. Nice one. In green. Uh, good job, Melissa. Put a square root sign there. Now, if you square root one side of the equation, what do you have to do to the other? You got to square root the other side. There you go. So this means that t equals t equals. Now, is this? What's our answer here? Be careful. Seven. Seven. Is there two answers or one? Because or seven. plus or minus seven. And you write it like this: plus and minus. That's right. Seven. Plus with a little minus underneath it. Seven. Okay. Because give me one of those. Black one. Because because seven times seven equals 49, or negative 7 times negative 7 equals 49. Both of those are true. All right, now in number 39, we've got, it says to solve the square root of 144x to the 8th over 36y to the 6th. First of all, you notice, well, first of all, there's a rule that will help you um, if you need it, is that the square root of the, this whole thing is the same thing as the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. So first of all, let's get that straight. Let's put equals the square root of 144x to the eighth, square root of 144x to the eighth, and then over square root of 36y to the sixth. Right now, what do you notice about this? Now, once you understand that step, this might look, you know it might look a little easier. Oh, I remember this. Does anybody know what the square root of 144 is? Same. Twelve, right? So what about the square root of x to the eighth? x to the fourth, right? Because x times x to the fourth times x to the fourth is equal to x to the eighth. So it equals, that equals 12x to the fourth over 6y to the y cubed. 6y cubed. And we're not done yet because we have to simplify the fraction. So that equals 2x to the fourth over y cubed. So you got to make sure you do that. 2x to the fourth over y Wait, cubed. Wait, why are you doing 2x fourth? 